Okay, today we're going to talk about replacing broken tabs on your vintage tin toys. As you know, these little tabs, the front body would be here, get put on there, a piece gets put around, then the tab gets bent over, and that's what holds them together. And you generally only get one or two tries at opening and closing these type of things before the tabs break off. <clears throat> now, when the tabs break off, the worst way you can try to repair it is to cut a new little strip of metal and glue it or epoxy it or super glue or any type of glue like that is just a surface glue and it's not going to last for the long term because metal uh, expands and contracts with room temperature as does the glue and as they expand and contract that bond between the two surfaces cracks, fractures because most of those glues are very brittle and then eventually the part falls off. Might take a year might take less. Kind of depends how many temper changes the uh, toy goes through. So in the past the best way I'd found to do it is to actually solder them on. You'd cut a new little tab out of some some metal, clean the metal on the inside. First you have to heat this metal, get a flow of solder on here so it's tinned. Then you put the piece in place and solder it to that. Now the problem with that is all that heat is going to discolor the paint. There's just no getting around it. It always does. And if you try to solder just way out, just where the little tab just barely fits in there, because that way it's going to be covered by the bent over tab in the end, you won't see it. That works, but that's such a small surface amount uh, connecting it that those tabs tend to break off. <clears throat> so uh, years ago I thought about using a mini spot welder, but they were so expensive back then, like uh, companies like Micromart and stuff sold them, and it was w way up in the hundred, uh, 150, 100, I don't know, they were very expensive. Then I actually saw some YouTubes where people were building them um, out of microwave transformers turned around the other way around, and uh, triac circuits that would pulse the transformer so you'd get a very low voltage but very high amperage output and make your own little spot welder. But more recently, just a week or so ago on Alphadrome, um, one of the members posted that he'd been using the little spot welders that are available now, and he was saying they were less than 50 bucks. In this case, <clears throat> this little unit right here, I picked up for $14.78 off of uh, AliExpress. The price has since gone up to $19.86, but it's still under 20 bucks. I ordered two different brands. I ordered this little guy here, and in case it was a total piece of crap and didn't work, I then also ordered this jumbo guy here. This has a lot more current output, but the problem with this one that I could see off the bat, even when I ordered it, but it was only $19, actually it was $18 and change, so less than $19, was the uh, fixed probes in the front meant any part you were going to try to uh, spot weld, you had to be able to get into. And in most cases, um, your body parts aren't going to be this big and open, but even if they are, you can't go at it that way. you got to go at it this way, and so you got to be able to get in at an angle. I could see this was going to be a limiting factor. Although, if the little one hadn't worked, my plan was to take these uh, copper electrodes and put a 90 degree bend on them, because that way you could just come right into the part like this and zap it. And an even better way would be to shorten one of them and do the 90 grin this way so you could come in vertically and zap them. But uh, I have experiment with this one. This one works great. We're not going to be using that one today. Today I'm going to be showing you how I use this one and how you can add new tabs without marring the paint finish. Now these units are all similar in one respect. This one has a couple of benefits that the bigger one didn't have. They charge through a micro uh, USB connector there and you got to be able to have, uh, it says 5 volts at 2.1 amps, that's the maximum. So I charge mine with a separate little uh, separate little wall charger left over from one of the cell phones through the years. And on the front what was nice about this one, besides doing the, the welding, is it also has a 5 volt at 2.1 amp output. So you could actually use this in a pinch to recharge cell phones or, well, run anything that needs 5 volts. Uh, the two cables plug in here. They're very heavy duty, as you can see. And they come down 
to these big copper tips. You have your main on off button which you hold on until it turns on. And once it turns on uh, all these red lights here show the internal battery charge state. Again this is only 5 volts. You're not going to get shocked or hurt by this. However the amperage that it puts out for that split second the power level you choose is how long that split second is is about 600 amps. Can't hurt you because 5 volts won't allow any of the voltage to pass through your skin you know to conduct. So quick pushes in here will change the power level. Right now there's three LEDs. So you can see I'm on power level three. If I poke it again, there's power level four, there's five, and I poke it again, it goes back to one. So what I've found through experimentation with this unit and the other unit, the bigger one, is um, power level three is pretty much required to uh, do a repair tab on, on this piece of metal at any rate. And with the uh, nickel um, metal strips that I'm going to be showing you here in a second. But uh, anything higher than that, it will get hot enough that it will leave. Oh, let's see if we can find one. Here we go. See those two little burn marks? Those would be the two burn marks, and I believe I put that strip on right there uh, on power level four and I didn't do any cooling on this side. And then the one right next to it, this little tab, I believe that was a power level three and it didn't leave anything. Now those aren't gonna come off. They, they are welded on there. They're gonna stay on there. And of course I did all kinds of experiments uh, over here on this side at different power levels using both units and running them real hot up to five to see how much it would burn through and, and just hitting just the bare metal just to see what that would do. Did all kinds of crazy experiments. But the uh, one that works out the best for me, and this is a little tab that I just shot just as I turned the camera on, right here. And of course in the end you would bend that over and that would become your tab if that was the place where you needed it. And it left uh, absolutely no blem whatsoever on the, on the metal. And the reason is, is I decided wouldn't it be a good idea to take a sponge or a wet cloth in cold water and lay that on the painted side, so I went like like that, so that the metal itself was touching, the paint was touching something cool and damp. So the paint's kept cool, and that way when I put the strip on, and I'm going to tell you more about the strips, just hang with me here. Here's a little uh, strip of nickel metal, which I have cut. I'm going to hold it on with it's nickel plated, direct steel, but it's nickel plated. Hold it in place with a magnet, I found is the easiest way. So you can position your, your tab exactly where you want it. Let the magnet hold it there. Just rest that on the sponge. And of course, I really need another set of hands, but now I'll take this guy here. I kind of set it. You take the two probes and push them right down onto the tab. And you saw that and there was a little beep which the camera may not have picked up. I'll take the magnet out of there now. Yeah, that puppy's on there. I bet I could go to a level four with that sponge there. Come around to this side. Left no marks at all, as you can see. Oh, see that was the one that we just did and it came off. Let's try a level four. Heard the magnet. Heard the magnet. So the adding the sponge does take away some of the heat and it's looking like it's gonna make you need to run it a little bit hotter. Hey, we're learning together. These are all experiments. Let's find out. I think it's going to be different with uh, whether you are cooling the metal and not cooling the, the metal from the outside. It's certainly going to be different with... Uh, stay there. Let's bump this puppy up to uh, a level four. Alright. Get one of the probes on there. 
it automatically fires once it senses both probes are uh, on the metal. It waits about a second to make sure that you have a good connection. Okay, still no mark on the outside. Oh, yeah, this one, this one's not coming off. Here's where I fried it. There are no, no blems there. You can see the, the two new marks versus the two original ones. So, when you buy one of these, they actually come with a sample of the uh, nickel-coated wire, but this is uh, too light to use for tabs. This is a 0 0.1 uh, millimeter. Really nice stuff for joining batteries together, which is what these are sold for. But I went ahead and ordered this roll of 0 0.2, and this is just about perfect for making tabs. And this entire huge roll, which would last you several lifetimes, was less than $3. It was $2 and change. So that worked out good. Oh, and basically what I do is you cut off a length of it as long as you need for your tab and what you want inside the body, and then cut down the length of it, the width of the tab that you need. And that's what it takes. So, um, let me just show you what these are called in case you want to hunt one up on AliExpress. So hang on, camera is moving. We're on the move. Maybe I'll have to zoom in here. I can't get the camera a whole lot closer. So even though this is an angle, you can see battery spot welder, five power adjustable. This is the one that I bought. And at the time I bought it, like I say, it was $14 and I think 86 cents. It's now up to 1986. Still says it's 59% off. So I guess the price uh, may continue to go up. And the bigger one, which I didn't demo because it works exactly the same, it's just that you have the fixed tips, which make it a little bit harder to, uh, to work with, is still the same price, it's uh, $18.50. Nothing wrong with this unit. A person could screw in, because these, uh, these end pieces, these end pieces are screwed in. A person could take those off and screw in their own cables like this guy has, and turn it into a portable one, or bend these tips like I talked about just earlier in the video. Either way. So there's your helpful tip on uh, replacing broken tabs on tin toys using the little mini spot welders. And I think anytime you can do it for less than 20 bucks and add a valuable tool to your tool kit, why not? Like I say, you can set them. This, this would be one of the thin ones here. That's the thin stuff. I don't know how long that would last. Then this is the thicker. You really have to bend. Thin, thin. I, I think I did two thins and then started using the uh, thicker stuff. Hit them with higher... Uh, levels the thin stuff burned through oh well, we've been through this i mean these uh these connections aren't going anywhere they're much solider than uh than glues every bit as good probably as solder if not better let's try another one turned it on let's leave it on level four Take our magnet. I've got a pre bent one here. So basically, I took the magnet. Is that where the lighting is, shows it? I guess it does. Took the magnet and I'm holding it in place. I'm going to put the two probes on, on there. I've got the sponge underneath. You know, it would be very helpful if I had this body in a magnetic vise or something. All right, there's one probe. Is this on camera? I think it is. And let's push. Now, 
that mark isn't from what I just did. That mark was from that test where I was just zapping metal when I first got the toy. Oh yeah. So it left no marks at all. On level four when I used a sponge to cool the paint on this side. So there's your tip of the day. If you're going to do a lot of tin toy repair and you know you're going to have broken tabs, buy some of the 0.2 millimeter nickel uh, metal and uh, buy the cheapest one of the uh, battery spot welders you can find. Basically, the it's just dead shorting the uh, high capacity battery in this thing for just a split second it generates all that heat that it needs and the level you put it on is how long it, it's going to do that. Very useful unit. I mean this is just a power bank. I don't think you can buy a power bank that can output that much current. See the battery current on this one is rated uh, 650 amps. That's your maximum. Obviously you can't pull that continuously. This one was rated uh, to 800. It's, it's a bigger unit. But until you do something about these tips, it's not quite as easy to use. Now, in some respects, it might be easier to use because you don't have a hand holding each one of these probes. You can just go in there, you know, you can just go in there with this thing and hit it like that. Just for the heck of it, let's hit one of these and uh, let's just see. Let's hit the power button. This one's on. And... This one shows the power level in blue. I'll hit the same place, one of the same places, and let's see if this one burns through without. Just got to make sure we've got a tab that we're hitting that doesn't have any signs of being burnt through. And I can get these probes in there. That'll be the tricky part, right? I'm going to have to go in at an angle. Okay, that was a level three. <clears throat> the part was already secured, so we won't know if three would have held it or not. But uh, it zapped it, and I got in there with that. So, I, I mean, both units would be good. That one's really good for a one-handed use. I think once I reposition those, uh, reposition these electrodes so that it's easier to get inside the toy to do the job. With those repositioned, I think this would be my favorite one. Without them repositioned, this little guy is my favorite one. This one can't be used as the power bank, though. This one you can only recharge. You can't pull power back out to power other things, which is a, a useful thing to have. So I still really like this little guy a lot. 